What's going on? Welcome to this Q300 CADVAC exhaust installation video. I'm gonna show you step by step how to get this exhaust installed in your car. I'm doing it in a 2020 Subaru STI. Now, although I'm installing the Q300 CADVAC exhaust, this is gonna be basically the same for any CADVAC exhaust that you may choose. I'll put links to everything you see me using in the video description. Now, I did a separate review video, so if you wanna know what I think about this exhaust and hear sound clips and much more information, I'll link to that review video up above and in the video description. Let's get to it. To start this installation, we have to remove the mufflers. For this, we're gonna need a 14 millimeter deep socket and a 14 millimeter wrench to remove the two bolts holding it in place. As you can imagine, this install will require you to lift your car some. A full blown lift would be great. I don't currently have access to one, so I simply used Rhino ramps in the rear and jack stands in the front. You can see here that I also have the car supported on a second point right over the rear differential for safety. And in the front, I have another jack over the center frame as well. However you raise your car, always have at least two points of support. Safety is super important when working under your car. If you have an older car, it may help to use some penetrating catalyst to help get stubborn bolts out. I didn't have much trouble using a small ratchet as you can see, but a breaker bar might be necessary. With the bolts removed, the muffler is just gonna dangle there. It's held in place by one exhaust hanger on each side like you see here. These are not usually difficult to get out. I start on the inner one and just wiggle the muffler back while pushing the hanger in the opposite direction. Just remember to support the muffler so it doesn't fall on you. On the outer one, there's a little bit less room, but the process is the same. If it's really difficult, you can use some WD-40 for lubrication, and that right there was the right muffler, but the left muffler is exactly the same. Now, the next step is removing the rear exhaust pipe, and for that, we have to go all the way to the middle of the car right here. We're gonna need a 14 millimeter wrench for the head of the bolt, and the nut is 12 millimeters. To make this easier, spray the bolt with some penetrating catalyst and let it soak for at least 10 minutes or so. In my case here, the bolt was so rusted from the Buffalo Winter and the road salt that comes with it that it broke in half almost right away. The same thing happened to the other bolt. Thankfully, we will not be reusing them. Before taking these off, make sure you put something underneath the rear pipe in case the bolt snap like mine did so that the rear pipe doesn't slam down like this. Now, the rear pipe will dangle in place because of this exhaust hanger right here. Exactly like we did the mufflers, we're gonna wiggle it right out just like this. Now here's a side-by-side -side view and make sure to check out my video review for a more in-depth comparison. But this right here is the hanger we just removed. And since the hanger stayed on the pipe, we're gonna just remove it from the old pipe, give it a good cleaning, and then we're gonna put it on our new exhaust right here. Go ahead and grab the rear portion of your new cat back and put it back on the hook. Spraying a little WD-40 on the rubber hanger will make it slide in easily. I use some bungee cord to hold it in place for the next step since I'm doing this alone. We're gonna then grab the forward portion of the new cat back and slide it into place. Make sure you grab one of the included gaskets and two nuts and bolts from the hardware in your kit and we're gonna very loosely screw in the nuts and bolts by hand. We'll torque them shortly. You can see that I used a garbage can to prop up the front so that the screws would line up properly. Okay, so the stock pipe diameter on the STI is 2.5 inches and this particular catback exhaust has a three inch pipe. You may have decided to just install the catback first for a change in exhaust notes and then upgrade the downpipe in the future as a power increasing modification, which is perfectly feasible and exactly what I did. If you're just installing the cat back and not also replacing the rest of the exhaust, then you have to get one of these adapters or you will likely develop exhaust leaks. As always, I have links in the video description for this to make it easier for you guys. You're going to see why we need this in a second, but it is assembled just like this. And this right here is where that adapter is going to go. I have some rust around here that I want to get rid of. I can do that easily with a large brush. Everyone's exhaust will be different based on the age of the car and where you live. Now, if your car is older or really rusted out down here, you might consider getting a new donut gasket. You can see here, mine is in good shape, so I'm reusing it, but they are pretty cheap. With it out, I can do a more thorough job of removing the surface rust here, and then when I'm done, I can simply put the donut gasket back. Now I'm using the hardware on the adapter kit that I just showed you. First, put the bolts in, and then the thick adapter that fits nicely against the donut gasket. 
and then the second gasket included in the adapter kit. Loosely secure everything in place with the two nuts. Again, we'll do this by hand and then we'll torque it in a second. Okay, so now grab one of the mufflers and first hang it on the outer hook. WD-40 will make this very easy. When done, put the hanger on the inside hook and just slide it in place. This should be very easy and the muffler's just gonna dangle there again. The other side is exactly the same. And just like we did the rear pipe, we're gonna grab a metal gasket from the kit and two bolts and nuts and we're gonna loosely install it by hand. The reason we're not torquing anything down yet is because we wanna make sure that the mufflers are lined upright and that the tips look good on the back of the car. So now it's time to torque everything down. The adapter kit doesn't have a torque specification given, but keep in mind that the stock bolt that goes here is only torqued down to 13.3 foot pounds of torque, which isn't all that much. And these are pretty thin bolts. So use your best judgment. And if you see this part right here starting to bend at all, you definitely tighten too much. You can see here, there will be a small gap left. And this is fine because remember that the donut gasket is what's doing all of the sealing here. Resist the temptation of adding anything right here to bridge that gap because you might end up with an exhaust leak. Now, the rest of the bolts are in place, but they're not torqued down yet. This is the time to step back and make sure your exhaust tips are aligned properly. It's common for them not to be. Simply rotate them and move the muffler around as needed from outside of the car until they are perfect. You can always loosen the bolts back up in the future and adjust if needed, but you can save yourself the trouble by ensuring your exhaust tips look good before fully torquing down your new exhaust. When they are aligned right, we're going to tighten these being careful not to shift them at all since that will throw off the alignment of the tips. Again, there is no torque specification given, but the stock bolts are torqued to 35.4 foot-pounds and that sounds like a reasonable amount, so that's what I went with. These and the muffler bolts are all 14 millimeter in size. After torquing them, step back again and make sure your muffler tips still look good and adjust as necessary. Now, pick a side and again, being careful not to shift the two sections, tighten the bolt with two wrenches and then just like before, torque them down appropriately. Again, I went with a stock specification of 35.4 foot-pounds. Go ahead and repeat this on the other side and then do a final inspection to make sure that the exhaust tips are still aligned and if they are, you are done. Now, if you want to see a detailed review of this exhaust, including tons of comparison sound clips, don't forget to check out my review video. I unbox it, show you specific differences between the stock exhaust and the Q300, and go over exactly why I chose this exhaust versus the others. So make sure to check it out, and if you know anyone who could use this information, make sure you share this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that I was detailed enough to allow you to do this at home yourself easily. If you liked the video, if you got something out of it, I would appreciate a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel. And let me know in the comment section what you think. Thank you so much. I'll see you next video. Take care.